Hey, Tommy. Hey, Andre. Happy Land Rover Day. It's a special day today, isn't it? It is a special day. Today is the 71st anniversary of the launch of the very first Land Rover, way back in 1948. Okay, that was a special day. It was in Amsterdam, wasn't it? It was, yes. So it's uh, what Land Rover is officially declaring as the world's Land Rover Day. Okay. Um, and as such, they gave us a little bit of a Land Rover Day gift. So they teased us with a few images and some information about the new Defender. Hey guys, you caught me on the set of TFL Now's live studio. That's right, and you know what I like to do right before we get started? I like to shave, I like to shower, and I like my breath to be clean. Dollar Shave Club, our sponsor, has you covered if you do the same thing I do. They have some products that are available for five bucks. Everything for shaving, everything for the scalp and skin, and of course, everything for the teeth and breath. So it starts with the Shave Starter Set, which comes with the Executive Razor and a three ounce tube of their Dr. Carver's Shave Butter. Then they have the Oral Care Starter Set, which comes with their weighty toothbrush and trial size version of their toothpaste. And finally, the Shower Starter Set, which comes with three trial size versions of their Amber Lavender Body Cleanser, Citrus and Hawaiian Ginger Face Cleanser, and the sage and black pepper shampoo. Now, I don't use shampoo, I am bald. However, our cameraman does, and he loves it, right? It's fantastic. Yeah. So, go to dollarshaveclub.com slash TFL today and get your $5 starter set right now. The Fender, of course, is the legendary Land Rover. It's kind of the vehicle that holds the DNA, that holds the brand. Yes. And the old one, in case the original. Yeah, the original um, really started in 1948. It wasn't called a Defender back then. It was known as a Land Rover series model. Yeah. And went all the way up through 2016 in a few different versions. But in 2016, it died, and we haven't seen one since. But this is going to be the first time we see a new one. Yeah, and it hasn't been in the United States for quite some time because it was sold here for just several years, wasn't it? Yeah, so in the mid-90s, they brought it over. I think it was like 94, 95, that era. And it sold pretty well, but it was super expensive, and it competed directly with the Jeep Wrangler, and it was way more expensive than the Jeep Wrangler, right. and it just kind of didn't have the uh, the ability to sell that well here in the U.S. Plus, they had all sorts of safety issues, being it uh, you know European imports, so they killed it off, and we haven't seen them since. Right, but it was based on a frame, right? It was a really body-on-frame vehicle, mm -hmm. the original Land Rovers and very trucky, right? Very robust, but that has changed recently, right? Yeah, so the old Land Rovers, they used to be very grounded in off-road ability, off-road capability, ease of use. So an old Land Rover series, an old Land Rover Defender typically had either a, a small four or five cylinder, you know, diesel engine, right? A lot of them had, um, you know, convertible tops or, or very sparse interiors. They all had solid axles. They all had body on frame construction. You know, they were trucks. Yes. But starting in the mid 2000s, especially, Land Rover really took a kind of a hard left turn and went more toward urban luxury. Now, the truck we're in right now is a Discovery 2. Yeah. And this was kind of the very last of the solid axle old school body Land on Rovers. frame. Right. Yeah, this is a body on frame. You know, big old chunky Heavy. solid axles. Yes. Big old V8 in the front. Right. Steel coil springs. This was kind of the last of that era. Right, right. But now, so the new Defender, and we know a little bit about it. First of all, they've been developing it for a long time. Yeah. Uh, thankfully, the prototypes looked boxy. Yeah. Right, because I think that's the DNA. It's the boxy shape. It's kind of the masculine form. But what the information we have so far is that it's going to be an independent rear suspension mm -hmm. and there are some prototype images out there that show potentially air suspension yeah so from what we've seen in these mules that have been testing it looks like it's also taken a hard left turn because it, it doesn't look all that rugged in the prototype photos it doesn't look like it has all that much ground clearance it kind of looks more like a crossover than a proper body on frame suv mm -hmm. um, plus like you mentioned, with an independent rear suspension and probably therefore an independent front suspension, it, it doesn't kind of have that same pedigree that the old one had when it disappeared in 2016. 
but what you know we've had we've tested discovery the new discovery yeah several times and what Land Rover has told us in the past and at their events and when we tested here sort of the, it's it's computerized right so right. the traction control systems are very sophisticated very complicated but they do the job they think for you right they attempt to think for you and also you can have adjustable right height Right, so you have that sort of sophisticated computer system. Yeah, so, you know, starting in 2005 when they killed off this Discovery, which had a horrible reputation here in the United States for liability, they changed the name to LR3 here in the US yeah. and they went to Discovery 3 elsewhere. But it brought in a whole new wave of Land Rover and even Range Rover products. So it had, um, you know, a independent suspension all around. Yeah. It had air suspension all around. Yes. It had a strong reliance on terrain management. It was actually the first vehicle to have like a proper terrain management system. And it was just a really different philosophy. Now Land Rover, like you said, will claim that it, you know they've made a more off-road worthy yeah. since this 2004 Discovery. I'm not so sure, however, because air suspensions will always fail given enough time. Um, yes, you can get a lot of ground clearance off of them, but typically when you start really jacking them up in the air, the suspension just gets so hard because um, the travel is so limited at such high pressures of the airbags. Yeah. So I, I really, I'm kind of disappointed that they went that same route with what looks to be the new Defender. Now they do claim it's the, what is it, the best 4x4 by by far, <laughs> is what they claim on yes, the side of the yes. mules. But we'll see whether or not that's true. Now let's do some speculating here because that's always fun. They said it's going to come out in September, which we think means the um, Frankfurt Auto Show. Okay. Or Motor Show. Makes sense. Um, Powertrains. You know, nothing is about well, release, but what do you think? Well, turbocharged, small engines, right? I think there's a trend generically in the in this um, sort of off-road slash SUV space, right? You make it unibody, you make it a little bit more lightweight, right? Yeah. So it's not a body and frame. You put a more efficient powertrain into it, maybe like a two liter turbo. Uh, Jaguar Land Rover have, has access to several engines. Right. And also hybrid systems. Well, they have, for example, like the Ingenium, I think it's called. Ingenium series. Yeah. That's their marketing term. Which is a, a two liter four cylinder turbo. It's exactly what you said. Yeah, exactly. And I would bet if this were to make it into that um, Defender here in the US, it will be made into like the eight speed or nine speed automatic. Yeah. Depending on, on you know where they're pulling it from. But I think it's um, going to also potentially have maybe some hybridization. Yeah, and they've started to play with this, right? Right. The Range Rover and Land Rover has started doing their plug-in hybrids and hybrid systems. Right. The big deal that a lot of you guys out there may be upset with is, in the past, the Defender and all the ones that preceded it, they were always affordable. They're kind of like tractors, right? You know, they were working vehicles. You could even get them in a pickup version. You could get them with, um, you know, extremely basic vinyl interiors with no options, no air conditioning in some cases. Yeah. They were working vehicles. You know, nowadays, even the cheapest Land Rovers like the Discovery Sport, they're still competing in a luxury class. Mm -hmm. um, don't even talk about Range Rover, that's a whole other world. Yes. So, very expensive. The question is do you think they'll come out with a bare bones utilitarian workhorse Defender, or are they only going to be expensive high end trims? I don't know. I, I think their image has been that of luxury recently, and that comfort and that kind of sophistication. Um, so, I doubt. First of all, let, let's just get back to the competition, right? If they're actually dipping into their heritage, they, they may have to contend with the Wrangler, right? right? They will have to contend with the Bronco, yeah, because the Bronco is coming, right. even though we have we don't know, you know, the way it looks quite yet. Um, but those are frame body and frame vehicles now, right? The, the, the Wrangler remains on a frame. The Bronco is using a modified Ranger, Ford Ranger frame. So they're gonna have to compete against those, but the Wranglers are getting expensive too. Yeah, I mean, my bet is, at least here in the United States, we're not gonna see that stripped down base model version. You know, Land Rover has moved so far up market with so many of their products, you know, even verging into what a few years ago would have been Range Rover territory. Mm -hmm. I don't think we're gonna see a basic, you know, off-road version. I think we're gonna, if, if it were me, I'd, I'd expect 50 some thousand plus dollars. Obviously, we're speculating here. Right. Uh, we know what the new Defender will look like. Uh, base price, you know, it's anybody's guess right now. I mean, they've done their homework, right? They know exactly how they want to price it. You know, I don't think it's going to be uh, base Wrangler territory. Right. I, I don't, that's just my opinion. Um, but there's another trend in the truck market these days. These are smaller compact trucks. 
Uh, for example, Ford is rumored to be working on a car, unibody-based um, truck called the Courier. Volkswagen is seriously looking at bringing a compact truck. I just saw it, a prototype of it, a concept in New York. Yeah. The Tarok. Yeah, the Tarok. That's yeah. pretty cool. Yeah, and the reason VW is thinking is um, there's some white space, unused, um, you know, there is a space in the United States where compact trucks are not there yet. Right. And Volkswagen can enter that market and potentially, you know, get a big market share because people want affordable small trucks. Will, will Defender line? I mean, I would think it would make sense for them to build a, like a little half cab. Yeah. You know, like a small pickup truck. I think that would be cool. That's somewhat affordable, but I don't think they're going to do it. What Land Rover, in my opinion, needs to do is instead of go down this luxury urban route with the new Defender, they need to take a fist and go, bam, take that Rubicon, right? Because the reason that people loved these old Land Rovers and these Range Rovers is because they had this, um, you know, feeling of, of elegance and luxury. But underneath, they were essentially these incredibly robust basically military yeah. vehicles yes yes um, and you know obviously discovery 2 is much of a military vehicle but it's got <laughs> right. a ton of capability in a refined package this new defender looks like they've lost in my opinion some of the downright capability and replaced it with you know on-road drivability and now, technology yeah one thing we did see is that there's going to be two different versions like a short wheelbase and a long wheelbase version and the other thing that's pretty cool is um, it looks like this, they have a spare tire that's kind of slung out back, which is a nice throwback to the old one. We also saw them testing it on, actually, based on the photos that they released, we were just here, Hell's Revenge. Did yes, you see? That yes. was the beginning of Hell's Revenge. Yep. You know, they're testing it clearly off-road, and they say that for the 71st anniversary, they have completed 1.2 million kilometers of testing on this SUV, so roughly 750,000 miles which means we're getting close. Now, I know a lot of you guys out there are super nervous. Are they gonna go with the old school off roady route? Are they gonna go with the more luxury refined route? We're kinda just gonna have to wait and see. And I think what Land Rover might do actually is they might in innovate on the interior. You know, on the new Evoque, you know how like the invisible hood, yeah. you know, is a, is a thing. Um, I, I see them going there maybe pushing that technology boundary and maybe doing them like a uh, heads up displays or augmented reality and, uh etc etc yeah absolutely i'm sure it's going to have some really cool off-road modes and sand modes yeah. and terrain stuff but yeah. is that enough to replace good old-fashioned solid axles and body on frame let us know in the comments below and thank you for watching thank you and go back to tfltruck.com for news views and real world truck reviews yeah